why this work called to you and why you've chosen to devote yourself to this? Ah, that's a beautiful question. I, I had a big life-changing awakening when I was 16, Acc accidentally. Uh, a school friend of mine asked if I would like to go and visit his grandmother, who was living as a Buddhist nun in a Tibetan monastery in Scotland. And we both went up more or less as a bit of a joke. And it was small then. It had been started by Trungpa, who, who was very famous in that tradition. He'd left. So it was a small Tibetan Buddhist monastery in Scotland. It's now big. Anyway, to cut a long story short, it was all kind of weird and exotic, and, but we tried to participate. But halfway through my week there, I was sitting in our room reading, quite idly reading a very traditional Buddhist text. And in a moment, I, I can't ever forget, it was like a huge curtain opened. And I knew what this text was saying. I, I just knew it in my bones. And basically what it was saying was that we live in a very small version of reality that we call reality as if it's the whole story, but it's actually very small. And that really, you know, really from that age on, my life has always been primarily oriented towards the exploration of what is that bigger reality. And what I see now is that, and what I write about a lot and work with a lot, is that we have normalized what I call a culture of absence. Mm -hmm. We have normalized the culture of disconnection. The great irony is we talk about connectivity all the time. and We have never been less connected. We don't feel, we don't uh, feel our bodies rational thinking dominates. So a lot of my work is about bringing the feeling body and the feeling heart to the same pitch as the thinking mind. Because until we do that, we're in a normalized disconnection and we don't even realize it. 